if going one week without alcohol sounds impossible to you, imagine two years. This is an episode you do not want to miss. Today, we're going to talk about three key points. One of our graduates, Mike Kavidnik, says, after two years alcohol-free, it just keeps getting better. I've figured out who I am, who I want to be, and I've created a vision to get there. He also says that harnessing the power of his emotions has been liberating, freeing, and empowering. Hey everyone, this is Victoria English, head coach at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm here with not just a two-year graduate of our program, but a man that I now consider a good friend. We build real relationships in here, certainly the members, but when a member comes in and entrusts us during those critical first 90 days, and then continues and reaches one year alcohol-free and then sticks around and hits two years alcohol-free. You can imagine that the, the, the connection runs deep, the bonds are real. And so I have the, inter- the pleasure and honor of interviewing Mike Kavidnik. K- <laughs> Kavidnik, it's always a mouthful. A gentleman who is now two years alcohol free. Mike is from Ohio. He is 68 years old. He has, I'm not kidding, aged backwards at least 10 years since he stopped drinking. It's amazing. If you can look at the video of this podcast, you'll see what I mean. He retired from Federal Express worldwide, where he was a sales manager for the Department of Defense big job. And he went on to become, are you ready for this? A part owner of a brewery. While sitting on that bar stool, day after day, same old conversations, he realized that nothing was going to change if nothing changed. And he took that leap of faith and here he is, tears alcohol free. Mike, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're welcome, Victoria. So at the beginning of the podcast, I mentioned those three three points that you you came up with. I said, what are three things that really matter in your second year of alcohol-free life? The first one that you came up with was, it just keeps getting better. I'll tell you guys, listeners, when people get to 90 days, they'll say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I achieved 90 days. And it is a huge deal. We celebrate everyone. And I'll say, "Mm mm-hmm, it's amazing. Wait till you get to one year. Then they get to one year and go, whoa, I thought 90 felt good. And then I'll say, wait till you hit two years. So Mike, once again, Coach V was right, yeah? (laughs) As always, right. (laughs) Can you tell us what you mean by that? It just keeps getting better. Well, you know, I heard the term early on. And I I, I asked the question, like, what do you mean it keeps getting better? I mean, that just sounds so foreign to me at 90 days or even at 40 days. But I can tell you, as, as time went on, um, <clears throat> the fog lifted and I, and I gained a lot of clarity, not only in, you know, everyday life and just, just the, the things that I normally do, but in, let's say, let's say socially, I gained clarity in terms of, I'm not just showing up just to have fun. I'm thinking about you know, maybe I, I, I want to meet a certain people. I have an objective, in other words. So relationally, I listen more. I actually have more empathy and compassion for others. I mean, it's, 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 it's not like I, what happened to these 
when I was drinking, what happened to these characteristics? I've honed them all the time, mm -hmm. but they, they weren't coming to the surface, but, but now they are. And I listen carefully and I really try to hear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last, I mean, as far as clarity, my life, I really, I take a specific look at it. You know, what am I doing? Am I, am I on track? Am I on the right path? Am I confident in where I'm going? So, you know, the clarity is a big deal. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing things like setting goals, which I've, I've done before, but not really made it part of who I am. Right. It's essential. To, it's essential to me now. Yes. So um, when you talk about it keeps getting better, I want to go back to the bar stool days for just a moment. And I would guess, so, uh, you know, you were what, 66 sitting mm -hmm. in your brewery. And I'm guessing the, the, the thought it just keeps getting better wasn't popping up in your mind. Well, right. I, I was living really going from distraction to distraction to distraction. Yes. You know, I mean, truthfully, that's what was mm -hmm. happening. I think that's important to notice because uh, when people come into our program, they certainly tend to feel much older than they are. And I speak with people who know that drinking isn't serving them, but they'll say things like, well, I mean, I'm in my late fifties or I'm in my sixties. I guess this is just how it's going to be. Exactly. You know, and you know, I'm retired. I've, I've been retired six years and i look around at, at, you know, my friends and I don't want to be that. Mm -hmm. I recognize that. And that's just how it's going to be at 60 or 70 or whatever. No, it's not for me. Right. And sure. relationally, you know, again, as your coach, I've gotten to know you quite well. And I've seen such, such personal growth, your relationship with yourself. And yeah. like you said, the way you can listen now, I know that has changed your relationships with your daughters. Um, what's that feel like? at 60, you know, it started at 66, but to have that new chapter, what's that like? You know, it, it's interesting, Victoria, because, you know, relation, relationships are the, are the key, really. I mean, that's, that's, that's where I get a lot of my energy and a lot of my, my joy, mm -hmm. and especially with my daughters. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I, I had lunch with my daughter yesterday and, and, you know, she was telling me about, you know, she got a promotion in her job and, and she's been through some, some very challenging times of her life mm -hmm. and I can see her, I can see her starting to win. And I thought, man, let's, let's get on this train and keep riding it. And, you know, I, I'm just so happy. Mm -hmm. I really am. Yeah. I'm so happy yeah. now in the past, in the past, I may have, I would, you know, judge and, and react and, you know, it wouldn't have been the same response and I could see it on her face. She just, she was lit up. Mm -hmm. That's, that's such a gem. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's a coincidence. Many of us that, you know, are in this program have teenagers or grown, grown kids. You have adult children. I have both. I have a teen and adult children. But, you know, when we stop drinking and we're able to step into a different role and we do learn to listen in a different way and to not judge and to have more compassion, to be less controlling, just supportive, um, I don't think it's a coincidence that so many of our children thrive. Hmm. It's like that you really do see them come into their own in a new way. And I think it's because of what we're modeling. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I, I, they would ask me, are you still alcohol free? I say, yeah, I am. And then I'm, six months would go by. Are you still, are you still on that program? 
I am. And that's all that was said, but the wheels are spinning. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. And you just have to be patient enough to let it play out. And I'm seeing that. Right. Yes. That's the gift of two years. You have that perspective. It, it doesn't all happen overnight. Right. But you stick with this and focus on yourself and your growth. It, you look back and you go, whoa, everyone's doing better. Isn't yeah. that something? Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. And you're right. Your life has continued to just get better. Yeah. You also talked about uh, that you've figured out who you want to be and you've created a vision for yourself. Yeah, I mean, you know, <clears throat> when I came to the conclusion that I wanted to stop, you know, living from event to event to event and, and you know, there's got to be more to, to life than this. You know, I had to ask myself, well, who do you want to be then? Because, you know, temporarily, this is fun at night, except the next morning's not fun. You know, there's a, there's a, I go as deep into pain as I do into joy the night before. And that's, that's not a, a recipe for success, you know? So I had to stop lying to myself. Mm -hmm. That was a step, first step for me. I, I really had to, to sit down and go, you know, if I just sit down and be quiet and think, what in my life needs correcting that I know needs correcting that I could actually correct? Yeah. What is that? And, you know, I kept getting this email and, 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 and it, it just happened to, be, to me. It was like, what coincidence is this? This is alcohol free living and it keeps coming up, keeps coming up, you know, and I, so I called and, and just, you know, a curious call. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a gentleman named Jim, who was really direct. Yeah. And it's kind of like, well, are you ready to do this or not? Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah. Oh, Jim, I don't know. You know, it's going to be Christmas and that's not a good time. And he goes, there's never a good time. He yeah. says, it's probably the best time for you. And he was right. So I signed up. And never look back, you know? Yeah. That's a good point. You, and, and I think we all have that moment where, where we, we just need to take a look at ourselves and say, yeah. okay, come on. You know, you're, you know, you're joking yourself. Stop yeah. it. And look at the reality of the situation. You know, you can see the trajectory. It's not leading to any kind of true joy. It's, it's a numbing agent that when that anesthesia wears off, it hurts like hell. It hurts more than it did. Right. And you right. know, you've wasted another day and, you know, for our listeners, most of the people who listen to us are in that middle age group. And we know that we don't want to waste days. It's precious. We've all lost people. We've known people who have been sick, you know, myself included with breast cancer and you get tired of being robbed. Yeah. It's, you know, that's a key point for me is, is I really recognize that time is slipping away quickly. Mm -hmm. And you know, that old adage of the older you get, the faster time goes, it's really true. And oh. you're like, wow. Um, I really need to assign myself to uh, something more meaningful than drinking and and doing all this stuff. I, I, I've got, I, I just have to. So, so I did. And, you know, I just kind of looked at it. Like I, I wanted to treat myself like I would treat somebody that I was responsible for caring for. I and I, that's, that's what I want to do. You know, that's how I kind of look at it. And, and I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm, I'm much better than what I was, you know? Oh Yeah. And why wouldn't you do that? You know, because don't, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's one of those things to where 
I wanted to rebuild and, and then just start adding value to, to what I do, who I associate with, what I'm about, et cetera. And that was a big one is who I associated with. That was a big one. Mm -hmm. And it helped me. And, and, you know, this program in particular, I'm associating with people who think like I do, they, they want to grow. They want to put the, the alcohol down and they want to feel something more out of life. Mm -hmm. And it, it's helped me being around those people and the kind of people I, I, I actually meet, you know, in real life has shifted. And they're the they're, different types of individuals. Really interesting. I would have never called that one, but it's happening. And, and it's good. Oh, for sure. Do you remember when you were, you, and I call it the space between, you've heard me say that, you know, when we stop drinking, we're in that space between of you're not, you don't want to be in the old life, but you haven't quite nestled into the the new one and you were you were still hanging on to some of those maybe you know expired relationships you'd outgrown them there's not judgment it's just right you had you had evolved out mm -hmm. of those relationships and i i remember it it did create a little bit of stress in you and i and i just said just hang on you're right you're your energy is different now. You're, you're going to attract naturally without really even trying too hard. You're going to attract a different sort of a friendship of romantic relationship. And you're saying that that has started to happen. That that is materialized and, and it's uncanny. I, I would not have expected it, but you know, it's happening and, and they're good, good friendships. They're not mm -hmm. acquaintances, you know, um, they're based on, you know, a, a deeper level of, of, you know, a, de a deeper relational level, I would say. And so that, that's, that's really good because like I said earlier, I, I get a lot of joy. I get a, I get a big bang out of people. I, I really do. And I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a good one. That's for sure. Speaking of when you joined our program and came in as the holidays were approaching, you know, I know we have listeners right now who are thinking, oh, I really need to do something about my drinking, but, but the holidays are coming. And of course my response is, come on guys, we all know how the drunk holidays go, but but if you were speaking to someone and they said, you know, I, yeah, I think I want to do something about this, man, Mike, I want to be like you, but ah, the holidays are coming. What would you say? Say, I understand. I thought the exact same thing. I thought the exact same thing. And you know what happened with me was, you know, I was in the program. I started the roughly around the 1st of October. Thanksgiving comes, you're not drinking. Well, traditionally, my family, they're not huge drinkers, but they'll have bottles of wine, et cetera. Wine is always there. Not drinking anything. Somebody will come in. I said, nah, I'm just not, I'm giving it up right now. Fast forward to Christmas. Christmas, I go to a, um, a friend's house for a um, Christmas party. She says, everybody raise your glass. This is a special glass. Put a special liquor and concoction in this glass. Yeah. We're going to toast this year's Christmas. I said, well, so I grabbed a glass of water and we toasted. And afterwards she goes, why didn't, why are you drinking water? I said, well, I'm just kind of giving up alcohol right now. She said, well, I saw you drinking a beer earlier. I said, well, that was a non-alcoholic beer that I brought uh -huh. myself. And she goes, oh. So, you know, you, you get that inquiry and we had a discussion about it afterwards. And I, you know, during the holidays, I just, I just wanted to see if I could, I could do it. I did it. It was, a, I had to explain myself a couple of times, but once you get through that, people understand 
And actually, like you said earlier, I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Trust me, if I can do that, you can do that. So, you know, the holidays, it, you're going to, if you transitioned into an alcohol-free lifestyle, you're going to go through the phase of learning how to be comfortable in a public setting where everybody else is drinking. And that's part of it. And you'll get comfortable after about the third time. And it'll be a non-issue after a year. And then after two years, it's like it doesn't even register. That so true. you can and you have at least as much fun, if not more, because you're, you know, you're aware of everything. You see the detail. You notice oh, things. Yeah. You, you're in a better mood immediately. <laughs> so I, it's, it's a win win for me. It is a win win. Well, yeah, you look better. Your skin looks better. You look like you, you know, we've had, I joke that, and you know, which member I'm talking about, we've had members be asked if they've had plastic surgery because they look so good. People say, have you had work done? It's like, no, I'm just not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. I mean, yeah. It, it... Yeah. And so walking into a, to a situation, you know, and look, a lot of us never learned how to socialize without that, that, that lubrication. And so it's okay. You can learn that. And like you said, the payoff is enormous because you don't need it and you don't, you don't want it, especially when you hang out and see how it affects people. And when you wake up the next day and you can go for a walk instead of being hung over with your coffee and the shame and, oh God, you know, just having your mornings back. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to recall what I shouldn't have said last night. Oh, you know, I've done that over and over. I'm like, oh, because I, I am, I'm really conscious about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I've embarrassed myself more than I want to admit. Oh, sure. So now I'm shifted to, well, I remember having that conversation last night that really impacted me. And I, I may want to call him or her back and learn more about that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it just unfolds your curiosity unfolds and better relationships unfold. And, you know, it's, it, it's really worked out. Very I'll say, um, last bullet point and, and, you know, guys, listeners, I, I, I ask our graduates for these bullet points because otherwise Mike and I could be here for hours just talking about this it's it's not unusual for people who hit one or two years to become very passionate about it not in a not in an evangelical way or anything it's just there's so many layers to it when you look back on on the journey and so for the benefit of your ears listeners we'll we'll keep it moving you said and this is something i love to hear the guys especially say that harnessing the power of your emotions yeah. So I, I traditionally would be a very reactive person, mm -hmm. very reactive. And I, I was aware of it and I, I fought it most of my life and, you know, uh, I'm aware of it. And it's just like at one point in the, in, in our discussion or, you know, in the coaching discussions, emotions came up and I'm like, Oh, I better pay attention see what happens here. Mm -hmm. I really don't pay attention to them before. It's just kind of like, I feel this and this is how I'm going to react. Yep. That's a lot of, that's not really thinking through anything, you know, yeah. but I've learned to take advantage of my emotions. You know, I've learned to uh, I'll give you an example. If, if, if I'm, if, well, if anyone's going to build a vision for their life, let's say, or, or a goal or something they want to accomplish. If you don't have a positive emotion attached to that, it, it's not going to fly, or it's certainly not going to fly as far as it could have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that's worked out for me because yes, I've goal set and I've put down a timeline and okay. And then fold it up and not look at it for a month. But if it has emotion, 
Yeah. You want to make it happen. Yeah. You're engaged. You're invested. And especially if it's a happy emotion, you know, or, oh, or sure. going to give you, I don't know, give you whatever good feeling you're after. Huh? And, and I, and once I learned that and I thought about it and then I used it now I've, I've actually seen it happen because I've created a, my first year, I created a vision board and I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Looking at this vision board. I'm like, oh, this is for grade school kids. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's powerful. It really, and I had emotions. I intentionally set emotions around each thing and I accomplished each one of them. When I look back and I'm like amazed amazed so yeah my my message is learn that your emotions you know are important they are the software you know for your life a lot mm -hmm. of it and if you can learn to take advantage of them and harness them i mean you're not going to i'm not here to control everything that i feel but if i can recognize a negative emotion that I shouldn't even have at that moment, at least I'll recognize it. And to the point of maybe I should not react and maybe I should back off and look at this a little bit. Exactly. Worst case, you know? Yes. Kind of that patience you talked about because we, you know, you, <laughs> me and the feelings wheel, but you know, you get to identify the emotions and acknowledge that they're all part of being human. And they're all allowed. They're not good or bad. Some are very uncomfortable. And we can learn to just tolerate them, learn from them, and let them move on through without pouring gasoline on it. Exactly. That's yeah. right. No, it's been, it's been wonderful to see you uh, evolve from, you know, and again, just sharing what you've shared with me, but someone who would sit on, sit with his buddies at the brewery and have these ideas and these things and, you know, be reactive and just sort of whichever way the wind blowed blew with his feelings to, wow, I'm in touch with my feelings. I'm harnessing them so that I can live a better life. And these aren't just random thoughts and ideas. These are goals and I'm reaching them. Yeah. It, it's tremendously it's just awesome. And I say awesome, like full of awe when I, when I look at your journey over the past two years. So before we wind up, you know, I, we mentioned you're so humble, Mike, but you mentioned, you know, I, I create a vision and I have goals and I attain them. We talked about some of this when I interviewed you last year, but Mike has <laughs> done a lot since he's gotten off that bar stool. And maybe you could just give us a few of your top hits, Mike, the things you've achieved in your two years alcohol free. Well, you know, I, you know, it was, it was, it was when you become alcohol free, you have a lot of extra time. <clears throat> I had a lot of extra time. I'm like, what am I going to do? Yeah. I have to have something to do. And, you know, so I started, I, I always kind of lean back on the fact that when, when everything goes terrible and you'd have nothing going on, work happens to be the antidote for me. Uh -huh. so I went to work. I went to work on my house and I, I created a, a new living area down in my, in my basement is now a lower level. It's not a basement. It's a lower level. So mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I love it. And I spent roughly a year doing it, all of it by myself. And I'd never done anything like that before. Mm -hmm. It was a new experience. I had to think. I had to really... I'd go to bed at night and think about what my next deal was, you know, down there. Mm -hmm. So that took shape. It's finished. I'm proud of it. It's something I can look back and say, I did that. Well, 
the war in Ukraine kicked off. And I kept watching this. I'm like, I could not believe this was happening. But it was happening. And I got so curious about it that I decided to um, contact a nonprofit and go over there. So I did. I raised money to go over there. And my role was to uh, help feed the refugees. And so we did do that. Met a lot of the refugees, met a lot of the displaced Ukrainian people, talked to them, their stories. You know, it's one thing to see it on TV. It's another thing to be there and actually see what's going on and feel it. And, you know, I did it. I did it really because my heart was with those people. I mean, one day you're living a normal life and the next day you're walking down a highway with your roller luggage. Yeah. And you have no choice. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to help them, but I also was curious about it. I was curious mm -hmm. to see it, you know? Yeah. I went there and spent eight days. I spent, I lived with a Romanian family and we worked every day and it was an awesome experience. So that was a, that was a big one. I decided that I wanted to try something new for me. I'd never done before. I'm, I'm pretty athletic, physical and stuff. And so I decided to get my scuba certification, got that. Went to Mexico, did 10 dives. It was an unbelievable experience, you know? I mean, it just, I'll never forget it. So, you know, for me, Victoria, I want more of those experiences that I'll never forget. Yeah. That's what I want, you know? And, and it doesn't have to be about me experiencing it. It could be helping somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that needs help. And we have a lot of people in this world that need help right now. Yeah. And so, you know, that's where I'm at. I mean, it's been, it's been a really interesting two years of my life. I will say that. Yes. One of the it's more. It's been a joy to watch it. Yeah. It's been a joy to participate. Yes. If so you resonated with what Mike said, take action. Mike did it. You can do it. You can book that free discovery call. You'll speak with me, Coach B, or one of our other awesome coaches. Let's have a conversation, see what we can come up with. See if we're a fit for you. And yeah, Mike's cheering you on. I'm cheering you on. You can do this. Yes. We all started Absolutely. out where you are. So until next time, Mike, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Yes. Everyone take good care and have an awesome day.